this guy looked in my looked at my throat and was like, "Okay, you've got some you got some lesions." Well, no we didn't pressure. know what what you know the future held for Shepard. Between the second album and the third album, you had you had a crazy vocal situation, right? Like yeah. you had to get vocal surgery. I did. Because what was going on with you? When when was this in the timeline? This was between albums two and three. Between, we, yeah, yeah. We'd toured uh, watching the sky. We'd done this ginormous regional tour in Australia, which, if you ever go to Australia, it is it is not a country of highways. It's sort of like <laughs> it's not an easy touring. single lane winding roads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not made for buses and like, sleeper sleeper vans. So doing the regional thing in Australia is kind of like a mission, and it, it's always a, a wonderful experience because the people in those towns never get artists coming through so they really appreciate it and it is like the energy is always super high was that when we did we had a bus we did we tried to have a bus oh my god like one like, of the three buses in australia side, don't side really note do that in no australia. side yeah. note they don't do that in australia we had this one bus and the air con broke down yeah. and this is like during summer in australia and we were traveling north queensland no. and we were all ended up just the whole band Bra and undies, the boys just in their undies, like sitting at the back of the bus, like dying. <laughs> it was it was not not fun. The glamour, Zach, the glamour. <laughs> the glamour but, of touring, yes. So after pretty much as soon as we finished this tour, we had booked a um, US tour right in November, right over Thanksgiving, which was a nightmare. Uh, logistically, it was not a good idea. And yeah. on the flight over, I somehow managed to catch this chest infection that even to this day, gives me like the heebie-jeebies how bad it was. And I have such huge anxiety and PTSD from that sickness and having to go and tour. It was like, I just, it was so painful. It was so stressful. It's like having a guitar that you can't tune. Yeah. And By then, the way, we were all sick on this last tour. Every, uh, everyone was sick on the last tour. You did it, well. Was it anything like that? No one was sick did, apart from me. I was on my deathbed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you were not sick, Zach. No, Zach, no I, I was... A, yeah, that's exactly you're right. Zach was an <laughs> expert. because he doesn't drink coffee or alcohol. I was, I was going to say that. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway, yeah. But the point is, we know how you felt with this because Emma had a mild cold. That's so right. So she knew. <laughs> I, had to, I had to get through this tour and I really pushed hard and I probably damaged my voice in, in a um, serious way and I got back from that tour and uh, we were recording with John Hume who I, I think you know yeah I don't know John do I know John Hume you, oh, you, you met, met him the John other day, day. he, he co-wrote Dean John. Lewis's hit Be All Right I love John if John he hears this yes. John's a great guy he, yeah. he's produced a bunch of our songs but we were recording I think with, I do know him, with actually, him. Yeah. we were recording with him in Byron Bay and I like I was on the microphone and I just I wasn't drinking, I was getting great sleep, and I just couldn't quite clear my voice, and I was just constantly like, <clears throat> <clears throat> all right, let's try that tr try that take again. And I think it was on like day three or four, where John was just like, hey, I just, you know, just listening to your voice, uh, you know, you, you probably want to just get it checked. Like, go to an ear, nose, and throat specialist, and just get him to have a look at it, because you might have something there. So I went, and... How nervous were you? You had to be freaking out yeah i was kind of nervous and i went and i went and saw one of the best in the world matt broadhurst who is in brisbane there's like one guy in brisbane one guy in melbourne one guy in new york apparently who who, who can do the surgery and this guy looked in my looked to my throat and was like okay you've got some you got some lesions which is like the start of a nodule the start of a polyp it's kind of like the more you sing you know it's like after a big show your uh, vocal cords will swell up just like you know you've had the pump on in the gym and so if you don't let them rest and, and recuperate and you go and do another show the next night and push hard, for example, they'll just keep on like swelling up until they get so swollen that they split. There's like a literal split in the membrane, yeah. which then heals over and becomes scar tissue. And it's, it's essentially like a callus, like you get from playing guitar on your vocal cords, which is not, not a not good what thing. Not you want, yeah. Because <laughs> it's, it, yeah, it, it means you can't hit certain notes and it's not a clean sound and yada, yada, yada. So I had to go and get surgery to get those lasered How off. How do they do it? They go in through your mouth or are they go in through the, through your neck? No, they're just going through the mouth. Through the mouth. Yeah, yeah. And, and you couldn't talk for two weeks, right? I had to be silent. I had to go into a, like, m like yeah. Buddhist monk so state up in the cabin in the woods. Freaking out. I think we were all freaking out at that point. Yeah. Um, I mean, more so for George. Mm. Uh, no, but, but selfishly, you have to be like, this Like this is all going to fall apart. Yeah, well, no we didn't pressure. know what, what 
you know, the future held for Shepard. And we were, we were actually recording Die Young at the time. No and, way. and that's kind of what yeah. the song became about. It was like, oh, well, if this is the end of it and the end of the band, yeah. it was very dramatic. <laughs> How replaceable is George? Do you think you could find another singer to no. come in and, and fill you his could, shoes? You could fill in any time, so? though. <laughs> He's irreplaceable. We can't way, do it without each other. The way you look yeah. at yourself in the mirror when you're playing guitar. I could do it. That was the audition that, right That's there. right. Yeah, Can we yeah, just yeah. tell that story really quickly? Yeah, we're in, God, we were in a rehearsal. <laughs> tell the story. Tell the story. <laughs> we're sitting in rehearsal. This is, this is Zach's first rehearsal with the band. And uh, we're all like sitting there in a, in a circle playing the songs. And I look over at Zach and, <laughs> and I catch Zach looking in the mirror at himself and he's just loving it he's just like <laughs> he's got a guitar he's playing in a band power stance and he just Do you know what like, that comes from though can i be can i be serious for a second you know what that comes from <laughs> that comes from like performing on stage and sometimes watching videos back of me performing and then thinking i look like really awkward or I, you think like sometimes you think you're doing this like massive gesture on stage and you watch the video back and it's like this very small mm. thing or it doesn't look like the way you do it. Yeah. So I like I was looking at myself being like, is the way I feel like I'm standing actually how I look in the mirror? Is the sexiness I'm is feeling the sexiness I'm feeling <laughs> actually <laughs> translating? <laughs> And George just caught me like at the wrong at time, the absolute best time I'd to, to catch stop. me in that moment. We had to the, stop the song. It was, yeah. it was too much. Here's the point, though. The new album is out now. It just went number one in Australia, so we're celebrating Zora, the new album. How many songs are on this? By the way, sixteen. There's sixteen songs on this album for all you Shepherd fans to go listen to. Some of them are quite good, actually. No, no, no. <laughs> most of them 